Professorship in Mathematics and Science Education, Dr. Samson Mitchell. Thank you everybody, and uh, I would like just to thank like everyone else does with a deep honor to those whose lands that belong to. Because where I was born, we always respect the lands where people's, we say, umbilical cords were buried. Whatever your umbilical cord was buried, we believe that's where one belongs or you, you tend to honor the ancestors and everybody. Even when we become learned, we believe that knowledge is coming from those people. I must thank the team, including David Robertai, for creating this professorship. And I must say it's a privilege for me to be one of the recipients or the people named to this position. Now, I looked at the mandates of the professorship very carefully. And it was, we engage in research, or one has to engage in research in mathematics and science education, including technology. Then I, I really struggled. How can I alone do this? When I have colleagues doing all these things, so I added in the collective. How can I, as much as I advance my own research, recognize those colleagues who are doing research in the same area but pursuing different topics? So part of my vision is to bring together those within the faculty who are doing research in the maths science and technology, and to create a forum where they can share their research interests, because we find that whatever we get from our research, it will have a relationship to what someone else actually uh, is trying to find out, and so on. So briefly, I'll just be moving through some of these just to see like consolidate the various groups within that and it's STEM, but added STEAM. The reason being, anything we do that is science, maths, or whatever related, nowadays you have to be conscious of its impact on the environment. So it's very important that whatever we do, whether it's science, we pay attention environment. Talk to anybody in the hallway. Look out through the window. People will talk about, oh, it's smoky today. It's whatever. It's about the environment. The other one is to expand what is happening in the informal. And I'm a great fan of uh, using the informal context to enhance learning and expand my own research, which I'll talk about very briefly. And my own research, I have several research interests, but generally, I'm usually interested in how we, that is in ways of teaching and learning sciences. And the sciences here include even mathematics. Now, sometimes I've been asked, what level? elementary, high school, post-secondary, and I sometimes struggle with that question because I have some, I'm a believer in constructivist <laughs> upbringing. We construct images of our own understanding based on how we've been brought up. I was brought up in a spiral curriculum. Spiral curriculum model is that if, I, if you were to deal with things at high school, it might be very difficult to understand them unless you look back to see where are these kids coming from. 
And if you are a researcher, you become curious. So I'm always curious to find out what is happening at other levels. But the project I'm going to talk about today is a study that I've been involved in. I'm a principal investigator on that study from the Faculty of Education side, but I work with colleagues from the Faculty of Medicine and it's located both in our Department of Curriculum and Pedagogy and at the BC Children's Hospital. And it's a very simple study. It's just about edu educating about hazards of choking. Looks simple, but you'll be amazed at what we get and so on. Hazards of choking, people have assumed a lot. They have constructed explanations for this. And they do affect kids even in school. And you find whatever the mother believes, the child will also believe. And even some people struggle with that. So how did we come up with this topic? Came up with this topic because one time, a parent had taken a child who was having a call to a doctor or a physician. This kid was having a tiny carrot. So the physician got concerned and said, oh, don't eat that one, be careful could choke. But you'll be surprised how the parent responded. The parent was not happy and told the doctor, mind your business. To the doctors, they felt his parent did not understand, was rude. And these are my colleagues. But when they shared this with me as a constructivist I always want to know where are these responses coming from but something clicked I think in BC and Canada doctors are supposed to report to social workers if they noticed that the child is not being cared for properly. Two, parents are very proud people. When you challenge their parenting skills, some of them don't feel very happy. So that's how we decided. We want to find out what do they think about choking. And then we designed a study that will look at people's views of hazards of choking from pre-teen, teens, high school, pre-service teachers, and the teachers. But how are we to do this? We thought of having case studies of different groups because we are focusing on these groups. And what we simply do I'll back up a bit. We brainstormed on how we should do this. If you've worked with the medics, it's give the message out there. But I'm a, an educator. I said, nope. I want us to have a video, because they felt we need to show them a video. Then we ask them whether they agree with that or not. And uh, my only view was, I think we shouldn't do that. Why don't we show them a video of a child or anybody holding a carrot and ask them to predict what is likely to happen? It's a model we use in constructivist teaching. Predict, observe, predict, explain. You explain your own predictions. You observe. If observations conflict, then you see if you can come up with a new explanation. They found that to be very amazing. 
So that is what we show the kids to explain at different levels. We start with these scenarios and let them predict. And then we would show them what is likely to, to happen. And some of the things, we would show them a pin like that. People put in the mouth. The others, if you ask what would happen, tell you nothing would happen. That's a grown up. The next minute, what do you see? It's very interesting. That thing goes and lodges straight into the, sometimes it goes straight into the pipe. <clears throat> the most interesting one are construction workers who you can never predict what would happen to a nail they're trying to hit. And it's in the mouth, and the next minute you swallow it, <laughs> and so on. So, so what I want to share with you, when we, so far this is the initial study, but we are to move to different groups. We've only dealt, in, investigated this with the grade five kids. Look at how they define choking. They define it in terms of their own personal experience with the choking. You could see that. So if you've had experience with choking, that's how you believe, that's how choking is caused, not something outside that. It's only restricted to your experience. The students perceive the choking in terms of a eating habit. If you have bad eating habits, and then in this case, you choke because you are violating the particular habits. These ones, when we probe them further, yes, we found they understand. Because quite often, even parents talk about choking when kids are eating. Finish your eating fast, don't talk, and so on. It's a good thing. But outside of that, they couldn't, but the age level. So just to conclude, I'm about just to finish. This is the last one. Typically what we showed them conflicted with their own experience. They believed what they swallowed before can never choke them again. So this is part of my research program, but I'm also working closely with my colleagues and because I want to work with a team, I've created what I call the, that is the professorship advisory committee. And these are some of the colleagues that I'm working with. But that's my research project. Their own and their other colleagues within the faculty will be hunting for them to have anything related to that could, we could connect to the professorship. We are sure we will invite you to give a presentation to share with us your findings because the whole idea is to disseminate research and see how it can be translated into practice. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Yeah. I just want to comment. I think that what Samson is doing in terms of co making connections with other colleagues is so consistent with what UBC has been asking us to do, which is to form those connections and build areas of research strength that have a particular thematic focus. And I think your vision for the professorship really captures that. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.